Hello YouTube, this is Bash Premier here for playoffs. We are in round one. Uh, if you didn't watch the previous video, I explained a decent amount of how the standings work and stuff like that. But um, yeah, let me pull up the standings real quick actually. So yeah, we ended up in third place. First two seats get a buy, and that means we have to play Pokino again. <laughs> the way it worked out. Um, it's crazy. If I won that game though, I would have gotten a buy. Um, wouldn't be playing this game, but you know what? And you know, I, I like to build up some momentum into the, into going to playoffs to be or like going into like these uh, other games too. And I, I'm excited to play um, Pokino again because I kind of want some revenge on that game. Um, if you didn't watch, we ended up uh, I guess spoilers, but yeah, uh, if you we end up losing last week to Pokino in week eleven. But we end up we're not playing Pokemon now again, and now I have a bit more on my side because kind of like the idea of last week was well obviously I wanted to get the bye week right if I want I get the bye right if I didn't whatever like I I didn't get the bye I ended up in the seed or the, uh, the fourth seed, but I also wanted to scat, sort of scout out what he wanted to do. I wasn't sure what he wanted to do. There was a lot of things I thought he could have bought a decent amount of his mods to be honest. Any of them I thought were pretty viable this match, uh, which are which is kind of really annoying to prep for. Um, like, I guess we'll go over the team. So, Pokinov has Dragapult, Zapdos, Aromatisse, Inferni, Rillaboom, Mantine, Espeon, Mega Aggron, Vanellix, and Nido Queen. Uh, with the Z Captains being Espeon and Inferni, my team, uh, well, all status in attacking is Espeon, attacking is uh, Inferni. My team has not changed for a bit, and it won't, so this will be the team we're going with. Zeror, Lando T, Milotic, Latios, Mimisline, Venusaur, Klepki, Torkoal, Mega Houndoom, Kecleon, with uh, all Z user being Zeror and attacking Z user being Lando T. So, based on what I learned from last week, but let's go into like sort of like why I think every mod can possibly get my team. So Dragapult, you know, Dragapult does what it does. It's pretty much viable like every week almost, unless you have like a really, really good um, dark type kind of switch in or like a really good fair. But even then, like it still could come. Like it, it, it has to be some really like I don't even know. Like it, 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 it's probably it's like coming like most of the time. Like kind of thing. Zapdos, Zapdos uh, is really annoying. Um, that test is really good for pressuring Milotic kind of situation. Um, also gives him a removal kind of situation, which is nice. Uh, and just the type of alone is kind of annoying for my team. Um, to be honest, so I'm going to keep that in mind. Aromatisse. Aromatisse is like a bulky set that like, uh, usually that will probably come like a Fizz Death bulky set. Uh, Wish Protect, Moonblast, and fourth move kind of situation. That's what it kind of does. It's really good. Uh, it's, it's probably his way of dealing with like Latios, like switching to Latios. Um, probably his way of getting like Wish Support to some of his mods that could be like more bulky. Like something like Mega Aggron could be really annoying with that core kind of thing. Bernie could be the Scarf or Setup. Um, very scary, um, in my opinion, I, I, I think at least. Um, if he sets up a special, uh, Latios walls it though, so like, I don't know if he brings special like setup, cause, uh, which I'll go into again a, a little bit, but yeah. Um, Rillaboom, Rillaboom can always come, to be honest, Rillaboom's always kind of annoying. Uh, it's really good at pressuring my loaded. It struggles against Torkoal, Mega Houndoom, Venusaur Core, to be honest, and Latios, I guess, too, as well, but. It can still come, and it can be really annoying to try, it can try to neuter um, Mamoswine that way with the grass to train up, uh, helping some of the other mods take some hits from uh, Mamoswine. Mantine, um, I can see it defensively. I saw it uh, offensively last time. Um, could see either way, to be honest. So, Espeon. Espeon is a really annoying kind of mod. It could come. It might, like, it could be, like, say, like, Klefki, right? If I bring Klefki, like, Espeon's very, like, can wall that thing pretty easily. So, stuff like that. Uh, it struggles against some certain things, though. Like, it's going to be revenged by Zara, like, most of the time. So, um, I guess if it's, like, like a really offensive set, it can maybe do some work. So, like, if you spec Scarf kind of set. Um, Mega Aggron. 
Um, very annoying. If, if he brings Rillaboom with Mega Aggron, um, that's going to be really difficult for my team to break down. Um, Mega Aggron is really only going to be beaten down then by Torkoal, Mega Houndoom core kind of thing. It's going to be, like, otherwise it's going to be very difficult for me to break him down. Um, especially with Mamoswine getting uh, nerfed by the uh, Grassy Terrain Earthquake kind of thing, if he brings Rillaboom, as I mentioned before. I can see Mega Aggron being really annoying, especially with Wish support with uh, Romatisse. So if they bring those three, I could see Mega Aggron being a huge issue for me to take down. Um, especially if it brings like an Iron Defense Body Press set, that could be really terrible for my team. Um, the Nelux could possibly see coming. I don't think it will though, to be honest. There's a chance it does. Uh, because I do have wait, I do have a lander staring and I have a loud Eos kind of situation. My low lick for free like has freeze drive. But I have Sun Torkoal kind of situation. The like, Yandem pretty much revenges all the time. Um, stuff like that, like, and Kecklein is able to wall it, I would say, too, so, like, I don't know, I don't think it would come, if it does, it's probably going to be, like, a utility set, or, like, a scarf set, um, I, and when I say utility, I don't mean a Roar Veil, I don't think a Roar Veil is coming, because of the fact that Torquo is right there, he's switching every time, and he doesn't get up a Roar Veil, uh, last but not least, he has Needle Queen, which is probably the most annoying mod for me to deal with, in my opinion, because, um, I want Zero to break through it, that's kind of the idea. If I could use Zero to, like, I, I, if I could break through Neo Queen, Zero kind of goes in this game if he's not, like, banded Rillaboom or something like that, or, like, Scarf Infernic or something like that. So, we gotta keep that in mind. But, yeah. Um, what did he end up bringing last time? I'm sorry about this. Team build is gonna be a lot longer for the like, playoff matches. I think, like, I want to talk a little bit more about the details of, like, the teams and stuff. But, basically, um, Last time he ended up bringing, what, from what I could pull together, right, he brought Dragapult, which was like a D Dance set. Uh, sub D Dance, or uh, Dragon Darts. That's the three things I know, and he has leftovers. So, and I'm guessing the sub was a setup on Torkoal kind of situation. Zapdos was a Thunderbolt, I think, Weather Ball, Rain Dance set. Um, Rain Dance, and it was Heavy Duty Boots, I believe, as well. Um, which I think was, yeah, it was weird, yeah, I remember, yeah, I said rocks, that's what, yeah. Uh, Zapdos was heavy duty, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, it was there for, uh, oh, no, the mod, we'll see in a second, like, in a bit, um, to try to slap and sweep, but yeah, I have rain dance. Aromatisse was, like, a wish protect moon blast set, it was all I saw, um, Fizz Dev kind of Aromatisse, so. Fernic was special, um, which I don't, like, Gladius can wall special in Fernic pretty well, I would say. Um, in front of Pat, I believe what was shown was like Nasty Plot, Focus Blast, Grass Knot, and then I think it was Fire Blast, um, if I remember correctly. I think it was, um, he told me afterwards that he was by Tinium Zito, um, after that match. So, gotta keep that in mind. Um, let me pull up something. Yeah. So, I want to, I want to keep that sort of in mind. Uh, for this match, um, that, that set is like really walled by Ladio, so, so I kind of, if he brings that, like fine, like Ladio should be able to deal with that, and Ladio's gonna deal with Zapdos as well, as, not, as long as it's not like Life or Hurricane, or Trispex, like Life or Hurricane with um, Rain Up, it could be really an issue. Uh, Mantine was the mod I was talking about, right? So Mantine came last time with Zapdos, the pair, so Zapdos would set up the rain, and Mantine would try to sweep the Swiss one. There was like a Life Orb Hydro Pump. He actually showed me the exact set. It was Life Orb Hydro Pump with Ice, uh, Life Orb, Swift Swim, um, Modest, Mantine with Hydro Pump, Hurricane, Ice Beam, and Bruce, I believe, was the other one, the last move. So, and then the last one I ended up bringing was, uh, Nita Queen, which was a Sugar Berry set with a Massive Tree, Max, uh, Max Special Attack, uh, Nita Queen ish. Um, kind of here to set up, and I also had, like, uh, I believe I had, like, Stealth Rocks. I think it was. Earth, Earth Power, Ice Beam, Stealth Rocks, Toxic Spikes, if I remember correctly. Um, it was kind of, the T-Spikes were kind of nice bringing against me, uh, especially since I, I didn't think I was bringing Venusaur, but that's kind of why I, was, I thought it was pretty good. But, yeah. So that's a team um, that he like, ended up bringing last time. I don't think he brings the same, I don't think he's going to bring the same team, to be honest. Um, I think the Swift Swim Man Time was a one-trick pony. Uh, I didn't bring my Lodic last time, and my Lodic walls that, um, like, pretty easily. So I'm going to, like, try to build a team that, like, is able to better deal with that. 
So let's go into the team I'm bringing. Um, as you can see, right off the bat, Baruch, right there. Um, right off the bat, I want to make it like a known thing. I want to make sure my Loic is probably one of the most important mods on this team right now. Um, it could honestly be his entire team of the Zapdos. Uh, if I play it correctly, if I play around things correctly. Um, so the, the reason, so the idea of this, this mod, right? So max HP, uh, 152 speed F. Now that means that I will never be 2A killed by Hurricane, Life Orb Hurricane, uh, after Rocks and Burn Chip, um, from Mantine. Life Orb Modest Mantine. Um, that was kind of, I think, the calc I went for. I threw the rest of defense just in case I wanted some, uh, way to also help deal with Dragapult. Um, could have put more into speed F. Probably should have. But what can I do? Um, yeah, so that was another that was a thing as well. So Scald Ice Beam Toxic. Ice Beam is there for the possible Riddle Doom switch it and for Zapdos and Dragapult. Uh, mostly for Dragapult though. Toxic is there for the Mantine to be able to deal with that better. Um, and the possibility of Zapdos switching in or Romatis uh, to ride a little bit. Scald, you know, Scald's for, you know, Infernape kind of stuff. I'm trying to get like uh, Neo Queen, trying to get Burns off kind of situation. So yeah. Uh, my look is very important in this match. It has a lot that she has to, a lot that she has to do this week. So I want to keep that in mind. Um, try to keep this healthy. Uh, this match. Next we got Zeror. Now this Zeror. So I was going through. I had Plasma Fist knock off Bulk up for the longest time on this on this set, and I didn't know what to do with the fourth move. Move. Um. I originally kept the Z Blaze Kick as last week, but I decided against it because of the fact that he um, revealed that he brought rain last time, and I didn't want to deal with that situation if you can't just face first rain dance early. Um, so I felt that Z Giga Impact was the best way to go around it because this thing actually a plus one. I think it's a, a plus one uh, bulk up. Z Giga Impact is a roll on XHP Needle Queen. Um, I think the KO. I think it was like 87% chance to KO kind of situation. Um, so that was kind of what I was calculating for. Um, so you can get your impact to be good for other things too. Like you hit like the little bit really hard and stuff like that. So that was kind of the idea. Um, the one thing I had to hope for was that he didn't bring Mega Aggro um, with this set because Mega Aggro is probably the only thing that can really deal with it now. Um, but yeah, so hopefully we can use it. Hopefully this thing comes in clutch. Godspeed. Come with us. Come on, we got this. Um, yeah, but Zero looks really good in this match, I would say. Um, that means everything on his team other than Scarfers or um, Swift Storm situation, kind of, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah. Next is Mammoth Swine. Now, I changed up. I, didn't, I kept sort of the similar set. I actually added more speed, I believe. A slightly more speed into this. Um, that way, the I want to say that I want to say it was because of the man time. Let's say speed is man time again. Yeah, I think that was it. Yeah, I threw in a bunch, a couple more speed. Um, basically, what happened was last time he was um, reaching man time with two twelve speed, I believe he got to. Um, so I decided uh, this to speed creep for that because last time I didn't, I sped tie actually man time, I believe. Um, so I wanted to speed creep for that uh, and threw it a bunch, a couple more uh, EVs into there just to make sure I get like out speed kind of thing. If he decides to up a little more speed into it. Um, so this means that, like, with, without rain, uh, this will outspeed the man time that he will probably bring. Um, so, but the set, Ice Shard, Ice School Spear, Earthquake, Heavy Slam. Um, now, uh, this is a really good set, right? So, originally I had Stealth Box on this set before. Um, I decided to switch out for Heavy Slam. Now, my thought process is, right, this thing... He does not switch into this thing at all. Like, at all. Like, I feel like there's every situ single situation I'm clicking and attacking the not Stealth Fox this match. Because as much as I love Stealth Fox this game, every time Mammoth Swine comes in, it's going to probably pick up like a kill. Or going to be forced to make like, a huge like prediction kind of situation. Um, 
So I'm kind of looking, I really want to try to take advantage of that. So I decided to put Heavy Slam on it. So, because the only Mon right now that doesn't get too KO'd by um, Mammoth Swine that possibly doesn't get too KO'd, it's a roll, um, is Aromatisse Physically Defensive Leftovers Wish Protect set. Um, so I have Heavy Slam. Um, that thing destroys it. And Heavy Slam also hits the Manalix really hard as well. So um, this thing really goes in. As I mentioned before, the only thing I can see as a problem is the fact that uh, if you bring Scrassy Terrain for this, because then it'd become a lot more difficult to, uh, to especially if you bring my gag on with this, um, so or with the uh, Riddle Boom. So I want to keep that in mind for this match, but yeah, this thing hits really hard. I showed really good for pressuring Dragapult, Ten, Zapdos, uh, Mantine if these goes like right, if he does that, uh, Riddle Boom as well. I think it's a speed creep, right? I'd really be like, really nice with Ice Shard instead of like asking gra uh, Grassy uh, Glide if I get the speed, uh, speed creep, right? Ice Skull Spear Earthquake, really good as well. Would love to go Ice Skull Crash, my Ice Skull Spear this week because the Dragapult sub Dragapult came last time, expecting it again to come this time. So, yeah. Next, we have uh, Latios. We have a similar set. But we have the same set but different EVs. So this time it went really, really bulky, right? So this is gonna be my Infernape, Zapdos check, and Needle Queen check. Uh, all three of those. Um, and the idea is uh, I went with Draco Psychic because like Mystical Fire or Spear. It's not gonna do that much to the Mega Agra, which is like the would kind of all those. Also I could set up uh, I could set up pretty easily on a Rheumatisse, I would say, unless it has toxic. Um, I got also gotta be careful of the dragon pole though. Easily switch in, but yeah, that's the set. Carver Carmine Draco Psychic, really good this match. Um, it gets revenge by Dragapult, which is the one problem I would say. But I, I'm gonna have ways. To, I'm gonna have a way to deal with Dragapult in a second. Um, so this is uh, physical at least Dragapult, and so this thing is really could be really clutch. Um, this match it looks really good um, based off of what I'm thinking this set will do. So yeah. Next is Torkoal, uh, Flamethrower, Gyro Ball, Rest Sleep Lock. So, as I, uh, uh, last time, Dragapult kept trying to switch in to try to set up on it with a sub, but with this set, it won't be able to, because Gyro Ball always breaks sub. It does about 36 to 43% uh, based off the, the HP investment I'm guessing he's going to have on Dragapult. Um, so, and he also can't set up with me that way. So, Gyro Ball is going to be really clutch. Minus speed nature, minus uh, speed, uh, no, no IVs in speed. Um, this thing is going to be, this thing, if you think Dragapult can set up on this thing, it cannot. Like, honestly, it cannot. And if it's physical, like Dragapult, like it was last time, uh, we didn't even see the fourth move, but if, it, if it's the same, like, similar side kind of thing, like, physically um, offensive, Dragapult's not being this. I'm, I'm going to be honest, Dragapult's not being this, unless it's getting, like, uh, some game terrible Sea Fox Thrones kind of situation. But even then, like, if it's just a 1v1, like, I'm clicking, I can kick Gyroball, like, three times in this game. Uh, he's not taking me out with uh, the Dragon Bear side. He's way too defensive to, uh, to get to have that early really like that. Especially shoot these like, leftovers like last time. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, Gyro Ball is literally only for that though. Um, otherwise, Flamethrower is here. Um, kind of one of the... Yeah, that was basically the idea of the set. So, yeah. Um, that's our Torkoal set. Uh, it's also here for Rillaboom. It's also here for Megagron. Uh, those are the three months it's here for. Uh, physical, Dragapult, Little Boom, like Agron. Uh, otherwise, it's not that amazing. So, But yeah, probably take it. Well, Torkoal is really good, I think, this match. Um, now that I have a way to deal with Dragapult, I think it's going to be really good. So, yeah. Last but not least, we have Landorus. The same set as before, um, except for we th I took out some EVs and, and attack and threw it into this Spadef. This is to make sure I, li I guarantee live a life for Ice Beam, Modest, um, uh, Needle Queen, I think after, maybe it was after a little chip? I forgot uh, exactly the calc, but I wanted to take some EVs out of, uh, uh, e EVs out of attack just to make sure I got the roll correct um, for the Spadef, to make sure I guarantee you live one. Um, if he's Life Orb, that's the thing. Uh, if, he was, if, if he's not Life Orb, I would, like, uh, before I was able to live a hit like with Boyachi Berry, but with Life Orb, I think, don't think I was guaranteed like 100% of the time. So I want to make sure I was guaranteed through through it all into uh, Spadef. Um, this is also enough to outspeed. Oh, 
I want to say this has enough speed to outspeed the the Nelix. I think that was the Calc. Yeah, it has enough speed to outspeed the Nelix, outspeed the Nelix is kind of idea. Um, that way I can try to take advantage and try to blow it back kind of situation. Uh, I don't want to risk... Uh, the Nelix would definitely uh, be a problem if it came um, for Landorus. So I wanted to make sure I outsped it so I could click stone it to just destroy it. Um, that was kind of idea with the set. But yeah, this is the team we're bringing. I feel very confident about this. Um, very confident. And sorry for a long uh, team builder. It's about like 20 minutes in, right? Yeah. It's about 20 minutes in, we're going to finally get into the match. Um, but it was, I just really want to go into detail with this team, so let's get into it. Okay. So Pokenope ends up bringing um, Mantine, Nidoqueen, Aromatisse, Dragapult, Infernape, and Zapdos. Uh, so, same team as last time, so I was thinking like, oh, is, is he bringing like the same sets? But, we'll see. Um, I believe I lead off with Zara Aura, because uh, I wanted to, um, the idea was I wanted to, in case you, uh, it was a good lead against everything, but the Neo Queen, I believe. And I guess in front of if you click Z, I don't want to deal with that. Um, I'm going to Ladio, so I'm afraid. Uh, so, uh, everything except except for the Needle Queen, I felt pretty good about the matchup lead. So, oh, that's really fast. It's still normal. Uh, I lead off Zeror, though, so he leads off Zaptus. I'm just going to knock off. Um, in case he brings the same strat, uh, I don't know if he wants to bring um, the dry, the Damp Rock, whatever, but in case he is, I'm going to try to knock off the Damp Rock in case he is. Um, he shows to be a pressure, by the way, but I get the leftovers off on Aromatisse. I go into Torkoal, which is a pretty easy switch in, and I'm going to double onto my Lodic, try to get the Flame Orb off. It's very important for this match. Um, I'm going to take hits better. I'm going to Toxic here, uh, just in case he goes to, uh, stays in with Aromatisse. And I'm looking pretty good here. I'm going to switch out to Latios here. As he shows the Rain Dance, so I'm guessing it's the same strat, similar strat to before. I'm going to try to sweep with Manti in this match. But I have a couple of different ways to deal with it. I want to Calm Mine, right? So I, and what's, the, what's the Calm Mine? That means the Ice Beam from Life Will Modest Mantine only does 30 to 40 percent. It's 30, no, 35 to 46 percent, right? I think was the count. Let me pull it up just to make. I want to count real quick. Mantine. Yeah, just I just want to make sure. Okay, yeah, Life Orb, Modest, um, Life Orb, Modest, Ice Beam, from a Mantine, when I'm at plus one, is only doing 34 to 40%, so I can literally set up on this thing, which is crazy, um, and that's, I'm gonna go for a second combine just to make sure I'm at a good enough HP, I, I can take another hit as well, like, pretty easily, I can get that, at plus two, uh, that means I, it would only be doing 25-30%, and that means um, I could, like, he's not going to pressure me out other than with Dragon Ball, and he has to risk going to Dragon Ball there. But he gets a crit. And I'd say I should have recovered to scout what he wanted to, or go for an attack, but... Yeah, that happened. Um, which sucks, because now I'm in a situation like, oh, well... I'm at, I got up to plus two, and... I'm going to be dead this next turn. Um, Latios was really good this match. It was really, it was pretty important for Inferno kind of situation and for Zapdos. Uh, and now we're in a situation where we got crit and I should have just been able to eat this up like easily. But so now I'm going to have to pull out a double into uh, my Lodic to try to save this around because I'm hoping I can get a recover off on, later off on Zapdos or Inferno if it's not Vacuum Wave. Um, or maybe even Nidoqueen if he's playing risky with it or not, so, um, or man time without rain up, I guess, but yeah, I'm gonna double, I'm gonna go for the recover, try to just waste out the last, last turn of rain kind of situation, and I'm gonna go make a risky play and go into Latios here, because at this point, like, um, if I'm probably, he, he's either going for rain dance, he's going for thunderbolt kind of situation, I don't think he's going for either one, uh, he's going for either one of those, 
at this point. Like, I think he has to go. He wants to go from Radiant to set up Rain again to try to sweep again. So I'm just going to recover here. Um, really good for me. Um, and that puts me at better, but I should have been at a higher health right there, which is going to come in later. We'll see. Um, so Torko gets Moonblasted here. I'm going to just Flamethrower, try to get some damage off. I do 41%, which is kind of nice, to be honest. Because he goes for Aromatherapy, which is kind of crazy, because if I Flamethrower and I got the Burn right there, which is hacks, right? But um, Aromatherapy's worth the dead, uh, I think, if, that, if that's how it works, right? Burn, is it Burn Come before Wish? I forgot. But um, I rest up. He goes into Dragon Ball. I pulled a double into Mammoth Swine, because what I was expecting was I was expecting um, him to try to go out into Zapdos. I believe. Yeah, I thought he was going after Zapdos right there. So I'm going to go up to Mana Swine here, and I go. I almost went for Earthquake. I literally had it clicked, and I switched my move last second to Ice Glow Spear, um, just in case he decided to go out to Mantine. Um, but Earthquake was definitely the right play, because this thing would have been dead, and that would have been crazy uh, good for us. But he got three hits. Better than the last time, uh, last game, we only got two hits with Mammoth the entire time we clicked Ice Glow Spear, so. Um, I'm going to go up to Landorus here, uh, scout what he wants to do for, go for, um, he gets the Grass Knot off, not the worst thing in the world, and I'm going to, uh, I believe I Rock Polish here, uh, kind of situation, and I'm going to double out to Torkoal, because I realize I don't do enough with Swords Dance, and he's going to 2 a kill me with Moonblast, um, with the Remitees. So, kind of annoying. I'm just going to double now into Zeror, expecting the Dragon Bolt to come in. And I'm going to double back into Torko here, because I made a misplay there. But it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, I can really... Uh, Romakis doesn't do much to me at all. So, I'm just going to go for a Seed Talk here. I get the Flamethrower off. Doesn't do much at all. He's slowly getting chipped down. Which is crazy, he would have been much lower if I clicked the move with Latios, or got the Green Curtain for it, whatever. Uh, but, he goes for Roost, gets his HP back. Kind of thing. Uh, my Lilic is in here, and I believe I go for Ice Beam. Yeah, I go for Ice Beam, expecting Zapdos to come in. But now I'm gonna go to Torko, try to get the last turn of sleep off here. As he goes for a Wish, he's going into the Needle Queen. Not the worst thing in the world. I'm gonna show. I get the Sweet Turf and I get the Gyro Ball, um, which kind of reveals sort of my set here a little bit. So, but I'm gonna go to Latios here. And as I said before, this, as I said before, being low like this is going to affect the match right here because I click the Psychic, right? Uh, I should be at, like, almost, like, 80% now. So I would have been, like, out of range of rocks now. So now I have to sack this off because at this point, switch kind of sucks. So I go for Psychic. And now Latios is pretty much dead, which is my Inferno check. So, yeah, that really kind of sucked. Um the crit earlier because that put me in a position where um, I ha I have to lose basically lose Latios to rocks now um, when I didn't really want to at all like that was I really was hoping that I didn't have to do that I, I was really hoping to keep it around for Infernape but I just like the way the game was flowing and the fact that the crit earlier kind of put me in this position where I had to um, pretty much sack Latios off which is going to come really huge in the end game you'll see but yeah Dragon Darts comes out Takes out Latios, so now I'm down a Mon. Um, sucks because Latios is kind of important for this match now, as I mentioned before. But Zara comes in. Um, I'm gonna bulk up. Um, I'm hoping he's not Willowis, and he actually stays in, which is crazy. Because um, if you want to, he goes, yeah, I get the I get the bulk up up, and if I want to knock off here, and I get the crit, doesn't matter. I would have taken out anyway. And now, um, let me pull up the count again. Because I miscut this, I think. Oh, it was a roll. Okay, never mind. Um, so I make a misplay. Uh, I kind of miscalc this. Uh, it was a 50% chance of KO here, right? Um, I miscalc it too, to be honest, anyway. But, um, yeah. I went for a second bulk up. Because if I got the second bulk up, bulk up off and he's not vacuum wave, I literally just won right here. But, I make the misplay and die there. What I should have maybe done, is I think right here, here, so Dragon Darts did what? Um, I think this was the better play, what I should have done. Um, uh, let me pull up the, sorry, I'm just putting the calc real quick. Dragon Darts, um, at plus one, 
Um, it did how much? Uh, let's count this again. Plus one, right? Plus one, it does. That was 24. 20, so that is 46, right? 46%. So at, if I went to plus two here, I would 100% live. And because uh, the max roll is 41% and I was at 42%. So as long as you have priority, I literally just went here if I went for a second bulk up, but I didn't, and that's unfortunate. So I'm pretty sure I would have just won right here. I just want to pull up the calc again. Yeah, 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 it's crazy. I, I would have won right there. Um, Yeah, I would have if I went for the second bulk up right there. I would have won right there, because um, you'll see inframe's not gonna have priority. But yeah, um, I'm making this play because uh, actually what happened, what would have done is I would have clicked Z, Giga Hemp Impact on this thing, taking this thing out would have been dead. Zapdos actually dies here from uh, plus two plasma fist. But now I get there. I have to go into man. I'll take the life orb chip. Uh, he gets the momentum and he goes into Infernape, which I, if I went with my gut. And Frank would have been dead already, which I mentioned before. And now I don't have my lobby uh, check to with Vadius. Everything he outspeeds everything on my team, which is very scary. So I'm just gonna go out to Torquil here, try to sack this thing off. He goes for a grass knot, um, and he goes for a focus blast, misses. Uh, what I should have done was go for the flamethrower. Um, was the better play, but he goes for a Z fight Tinium, which isn't the worst thing in the world for me. Um, which I'm dead too, so. But yeah, I go into my load. I have to go to my load here because fi fire blast in the sun would have taken me out, uh, Landorus. So uh, he didn't actually have fire blast. He'd overheat. But um, oh, we're gonna recover up, and on this turn, I'm gonna recover up to full. And as I mentioned before, this is why Lodios, using Lodios was such a big problem earlier, because I would have just instead of going to like talk, like instead of just like. Going to my load here, which I wanted my load to come out for Manti right now. Because this is the game plan right now. At this point, I need this is why I needed, right? So Landorus is kind of the most useful, uh, useless Pokemon if Man if uh, Latios was still around. Um, but the idea was right. Um, I need my load to come out for Manti. I would have need Latios around for Infernape, and Zapdos I could have dealt with uh, with the combination of Latios, uh, Mana Swine priority. Uh, cooking Stone Edge kind of situation. So, but now I'm gonna have to take a huge hit with Grass Knot. Brings me all the way down. I get a Scald off, and I'm down pretty low here. And I'm gonna have to. Rec I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna recover here. Um, try to get some HP back. I know he's going for Rain Dance there. He has to go for Rain Dance there. Uh, there's no other play he should have done here. And I'm down to 48%, which means. That it is currently a roll. Uh, if I switch out with my Lodic, it is a roll for Mantine to kill me with Hurricane after Rocks. So I gotta play with. I gotta. Play, it's gonna be a really difficult end game right here. I'm a. I got put in a bad position in the beginning because of the crit earlier. Uh, he played pretty well. He made the really good play in Infernape on a Mammoth Swine. Um, but this this is the point of the game where it's gonna come down to like me having to maneuver this game in order to win this. That's gonna be really tough though. Um, basically, my Lodic here. Um, I think my play here is to go to Mammoth at this point. Um, Cause like at this point, right? I need to waste out some of the rain turn. Um, I can if he goes into um, If he goes into the, what I could have also done was I could have gone for Landorus here, uh, which would have been nice as well, because that actually is, um, eh, no, I wouldn't say that's the play still. Um, basically, the idea is right now is I either use the 50/50. This is the first. This is the 50/50 here, right? So if Zapdos is has to is either calling kicking Thunderbolt or Weather Ball, right? So we're clicking one of those two, not, nothing else. And <clears throat> click Thunderbolt, I'm dead with my Lodic. He goes, click Thunderbolt, and I go into Mana Swine. I can take this out next turn with Ice Shard kind of situation. Uh, and he can't switch to Mana Tine because Mana Tine, I think, gets two shot by Ice Shard. Um, <clears throat> or close to it. 
So I want to keep that in mind for this match, for this this play right here. But if he goes for a weather ball and I go for a recover, I'm in a really good position. I got my Lilic backed up. It walls man time. I can now then pivot out into Landorus or Mamoswine the next turn. And, uh, I'll probably go into Landorus then, and Mamoswine would be still around, so I could assure this thing. And <clears throat> my Lodic walls that man time right there. So I've got to keep that in mind for this right here. But basically, I'm going to make the play into Mamoswine. I think I have to. At this point, I was in a really sticky situ situation. So I'm going to make the pivot out to Mamoswine here. Take the Rocks Chip, goes for the Thunderbolt. Yes, we wasted one turn of rain right there. I'm going to waste the second, we're going to take away the second turn by clicking this Ice Shard and KM the Zapdos. So now it is my Lodic, Mammoth Swine, Landorus T versus Mantine up with rain up. Um, as I mentioned before, it is a roll. It is in his favor though, with Mantine, with the Hurricane. I will mention that it is pretty good in his favor, to be honest. I think it's like a 70 80% roll chance to KO my Lodic after Rocks. So it's not looking too good for me. He goes up to Mantine. I'm gonna get as much chip off as possible here. Actually, it doesn't even two cut. Never mind. I lied about that. Um, Ice Shard comes off, and he goes for Hurricane, expecting maybe the Lodi can come in. I don't think. I don't know. Um, but I'm gonna go with my Lodi here. Um, the Calc, I believe, for this, which is by the way in his favor. My low tick is at 36%. Yeah, it's a 68% chance. 68.8% um, chance to Oko. Um, yeah, 68.8% chance to Oko. So it, it, I, if I live this, if I live this, I don't get confused and hit myself in confusion, it's game over. I recover. I stall this. I basically just toxic it and just like even waste out all the rain turns and just toxic it down to it instead. Um, that's kind of the idea. But he gets this roll or gets a confusion and kills me here. Um, it's gonna come. Uh, it's gonna come down to Landorus. This is our second one at this point. So Landorus is, now comes in. Rain is gone. So that play with Mamoswine going to Mamoswine there was super clutch for wasting out rain turn. It worked out perfectly for my last brain turn that I had to, oh, to waste out. And Landorus comes in, and all I have to do is land a Stone Edge here. Oh, it's all I have to do. I'm in the next round, and I do. Thank God I do. Crit doesn't matter. And oh my gosh, that game was insane. Um, oh my gosh. Good game to Pokino, because that was just way too close. Way too close. Um... Wow, yeah. Um, GG to GG to you though, bro. Um, honestly, um, that was ins that was literally insane. Um, good luck to you in the rest of the season. Uh, any other leagues you're doing? Pokino. Uh, he's also Pokino's a really chill guy. I've been talking to him, um, and he's like re he's a really chill guy. Um, fun guy as well. Um, but yeah, wow, wow. That was an intense game. Um, probably one of the cl like closest games I've had for a bit, probably, I would say. Um, before coming down to the wire in the situation. Um, so, and, yeah, I did talk about some of the hacks, right? But, like, the crit earlier kind of situation. Um, but I did misplay around some parts. Which I mentioned earlier, um, I like taking extra trip damage on Torko was kind of unfortunate. Um, Miscalking with Zeroar, if that wasn't like if Zeroar didn't calc that, like I could have just like what I could have done was maybe gone to Landorus to try to set up there on the Romatis if it didn't if the Pacifist didn't KO as you get impact. Um, so, uh, oh, actually it didn't KO. It didn't KO. But, so that was something to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, um, GG to Pokemon. We move on to the semifinals. I, uh, we are up against Zooch, who 
who was actually our week nine battle. Um, I did not reveal any of the sets I had in there other than the ones that were shown in the game. Um, so I'm really looking forward to kind of playing around it. I think I have a better idea of what I want to sort of do with that match. Um, especially since last time I didn't even prep for Cresselia because I didn't realize that transaction went through. I didn't realize he did another transaction at midnight. Um, so Cresselia, F was Cresselia and Oricorio, I think it was, maybe? But I think I have an idea of what I want to do. I want to keep um, that in mind for that match. But yeah, um, GG Pokino. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, Dash.